This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Takam's Lukes, Aoshima's KI100 Tony, Mini Art's Gaz 0330 Bus, and a special treat, a look at a pre-production sample of Airfix's new 172nd scale Wildcat. Hi and welcome to Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown, where we look at the newest accessories and kits. I'm Tim Kidwell. And I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's get started today with Tacom's new 135th scale Spey Panzer II. Also known as the Lux, which is German for Lynx, and don't take me to task if I completely murdered that, that uh, pronunciation. In any case, you get the idea. This amphibian entered service with the German Army in 1975. Designed for reconnaissance, it shares a lot of features with German eight-wheeled armored cars of World War II. Including all-axle steering and driver's positions front and back. Molded in tan plastic, the kit has a ton of external detail. The hull has finely engraved hatch outlines, clasps, and hinges. The grill vanes look terrific, and the small patches of non-skid are some of the best I've seen. The kit allows either the A1 or A2 versions to be built with parallel construction paths after the suspension. That makes it easy to stick to one version. External details include tools, tow cables, antennas, lights, crew hatches, periscopes, and mirrors. But most of the parts go into the complicated suspension. Most of it is exposed and the kit is designed so the steering is movable. Linkages inside the hull connect the steering rods so it should all work together, just like the full-size Lukes. Metal springs give the suspension realism. The fording plate is also movable. Tacom supplies two complete sets of vinyl tires for the different versions. The tread differs and one set is slightly larger. The turret hatches are separate, but there's no interior detail. The gun looks gorgeous with a hollowed out muzzle and a vinyl dust cover. Many of the turret's optics, including the A1's light, can be posed open or closed. Clear parts are used for all of the lights, periscopes, and sights. Photo etch metal supplies engine grills, suspension details, periscope covers, and more. With acknowledged assistance from ammo of MIG Jimenez, the kit provides markings for four Spey Panzer IIs. There are two overall green A1s and two NATO three-color A2s in Kosovo. Nice options on a great looking kit. Our second kit today is Aoshima's 172nd scale Kawasaki KI-100 Type 5, also known to the World War II allies as a Tony. Now it shared that code name and much of its airframe with the KI-61, which has to be one of the prettiest aircraft of World War II. On the other hand, the KI-100 looks as if it took a beating from the ugly stick. Yeah, no kidding. Taking off the streamlined inline engine and replacing it with a big fat radial does nothing for its attractiveness. No, but it did make it a fast, effective, and reliable fighter. Now, Aoshima's had a 172nd scale K100 in its catalog for a long time, but this is a new toolkit that just popped up a couple of years ago. The gray plastic parts are crisply molded with fine panel lines and open exhaust slots. Fine parts, like vent lips and actuators, are extremely sharp and close to scale thin, so take care handling them. The cockpit features walls with molded instruments and frames, a two-part seat, controls, gun sight, and the gun breaches. The engine is also a two-piece affair, one for each bank of cylinders, with decent detail. The cow front is a single part eliminating ugly gaps. Check out the wheel wells in the front and back sides of the gear doors. The clear parts include lights and optional sliding canopy sections. One is wide enough to fit over the fuselage in the open position. Decals provide markings for two green over gray aircraft with colorful insignia. Aoshima's radial Tony looks great and should be an easy build. Now we have Mini Arts 135th scale Gaz 0330 model 1938. Designed for local commuter service, a lot of these 16 passenger buses were built between 1933 and 1950. Conscripted during World War II, they were used as staff cars, ambulances, and they also uh, were used as troop transports. Mini Arts kit looks terrific and is packed full of details and beautiful molding. It shares engine, chassis, and drivetrain parts with the company's earlier Gaz MM truck kits. Get a load of the open louvers. There's a nice engine, leaf string suspension, two-wheel drive transmission and axle, and cool laminated tires that show accurate tread. Above the chassis, the differences become clear. The floor has molded grippy strips, and there's detail on both sides of the bus body. 
Eight bench-like seats occupy the passenger cabin. The driver's cab has a seat, controls, dash, and the windshield can be posed closed or open. Clear parts are provided for the cabin windows, lights, and destination sign. The front and rear passenger doors can be posed open, and there are even dome lights for the ceilings and cranks for the windows. Photo etched brass provides license plates, handles, and windshield brackets. One truly outstanding feature is the provision of markings for 10 buses with color diagrams and callouts by ammo of Mick Jimenez. Three are captured vehicles in German service, the rest are Soviet. A couple are the same gas in civilian and then in military service. This is an interesting subject, and there are a lot of cool photos of these from the war. Finally today, we have a treat. Yeah, Airfix was kind enough to send us a pre-production sample of its upcoming 172nd scale F4F4 Wildcat. Yeah, they sent us everything but the decals, and we figured you all might like to take a sneak peek. The kit features a detailed cockpit with a seat, headrest, pedals, controls, and decal instruments. Grumman's unique and complex landing gear builds up from six parts and fits into a bay with a detailed firewall. Get a load of the engine with valve rods and ignition wires molded on. The one-piece cal's intakes are scale fine. Engraved panel lines and rivets mark the fuselage and wings. Some, like the raised fasteners on the gun covers, are so fine care will be needed to preserve them during construction. But the big news for Wildcat fans is that this kit features a folded wing straight out of the box. Two complete sets of wings are included. One to model the wings straight, the other folded, so no fighting to align or cut parts. There's detail in the wing openings and it's engineered for ease and strength of assembly. Airfix supplies braces for the wings in folded positions and shows the ailerons angled away from the fuselage. The canopy can be posed open or closed using optional parts. Now we didn't get the decals with the test shot, but the color diagrams are present. Yeah, the kit will include markings for a U.S. Marine F4F4 at Henderson Field, Guadalcanal in 1942. And a U.S. Navy bird aboard the USS Enterprise in 1942. Well, that's another stunner from Airfix. Look for reviews of the Lux and Wildcat in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see these and other new products in the September issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Tim Kibble. We'll see you next time. Designed for local service, these 16 passenger... I'm sorry, I screwed that up. Yes, you did. Mediocre.